What's going on, you guys? It is The Talking Sasquatch, and it's great to have you back. It's finally time. I knew this day would come. After reading about this project a long time ago, it was kind of on hiatus for a while, but now, Bjorn the Cyber Viking is finally available for download. And maybe you're asking, what is Bjorn? Well, this is Bjorn. This adorable little cyber Viking right here lives on a Ponegachi skeleton, and it actually tests your own network for security issues. It's got a really, really cool interface. It's got a really good web UI. And yeah, it goes through and actually sees if you have vulnerabilities on all sorts of parts of your network. As I had mentioned before, again, this project's been ongoing for a while. So the fact that you can install it yourself is absolutely phenomenal. And it works on Ponegachi hardware, which is really cool. So if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero or really any Raspberry Raspberry Pi, and right now the wave share e-ink displays are what it's set up for. You can make your own Bjorn, and I'm going to show you how. Now, the project author, Infinition, has done a really good job making it super easy. So, yeah, let's get at it. All right, so first things first, what do you actually need to make Bjorn? So the first time I made Bjorn, this guy right here, this is just a Raspberry Pi Zero W. So nothing fancy, it's not the newer one, and I even had to solder the headers on myself. And not that soldering headers on is that hard, but I got myself a brand new Raspberry Pi 2 W with WH is the way they sell it with headers. It just saves a couple minutes. If you don't want to solder them, you can buy them with the headers already installed. And then we're going to be using a WaveShare V2, V3, or V4 screen. This is the 2.13 inch version. And then all you need is an SD card. Project like these, I typically just use 32 gig SD cards, partially because they're the least expensive ones, and I've got a bunch of them kicking around. And if you want to be fancy, you can get like a Pi Sugar battery like I have in, this is the Ponikachi I brought to DEF CON, which is now upside down running Bjorn. All right, so before we get into the nitty gritty of it all, I guess the big question is what does Bjorn do? Well, Bjorn is almost the opposite of a Ponegachi in some ways. So you see when you install Bjorn, what you do is you actually let it connect to your network. So it goes through and scans all of your devices on the inside of your network for vulnerabilities. It's looking for open ports or connections for, and I have to read it off, FTP, SSH, SMB, RDP, Telnet, and SQL. And while it's doing that, it also is trying to go through and steal files from the same protocols, FTP, SSH, SMB, RDP, and Telnet. It also runs Nmap Vulnerability Scanner, which is extremely cool. This little guy, for what he is, does a lot. All the while, the e-ink display is, is showing this adorable Cyber Viking. He's so cute, he's so much fun, and there's a great web portal. All right, so let's get down to installing it, but not before a quick segue to today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is your one-stop shop for PCB design, printing, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal fabrication, and more. With PCBWay, you'll never feel rushed to get your projects done. They have engineers on board that are willing to help you every single step of the way. And don't forget the module store. They've got a ton of cool stuff. If you want a gift for somebody or you need supplies for yourself, need a new soldering iron, new screwdriver, they've got everything. Not to mention they are super quick and easy if you want custom PCBs made. Go to PCBWay.com for a free instant quote. Thank you so much to PCBWay. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much for the continued support. Let's get back at it. All right, so first thing we're going to do is grab our SD card. This is a 32 gig I got from the folks over at Rabbit Labs. Those guys are awesome. And yeah, you don't need a huge one. Like, don't get a 256. You just don't need that. I found the 32s are the cheapest ones. So whatever you got, it's cool. And then grab a USB adapter because we're going to go ahead and plug this into our computer and install Raspberry Pi OS. All right, so let's hop on down to the desktop and take a look at it. So the first thing we're going to need to do is install Raspberry Pi Imager. So we're at raspberrypi.com slash software software and you can go ahead and download for Windows. I already have it for obvious reasons. Um, so let's load that up. Raspberry Pi Imager, let it load. And here we go. And then make sure you take your SD card and plug it into your computer. And we're plugged in. It says you need to format the disk. That's just because it's already got, I can't remember it's Bjorn. I can't remember what's on here, but that's what we're doing with it right now. So we can go ahead and just click cancel there. No big deal. So what we're gonna do is choose our device. It should pop up right here. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 that we're gonna use right now. You can use a uh, one, you can use uh, whatever, but just make sure you have the right one selected. Um, if you have a Raspberry Pi Zero, the normal one, just select right there, couldn't be easier. I'm going to go back to two because that's what we're using. Bam, choose our OS. So we actually want to run the 32-bit version, but we want to run the light version. So we're actually going to click other and then go to 32-bit 
And with, yeah, here's 32-bit light with no desktop environment. Very important. Run that one. Also, make sure it's 241022. That's the date for it. Uh, that's what it's currently built on for Bjorn. This may change in the future, just as a heads up. As long as it's Debian Bookworm Lite, you're good to go. Here we go. Choose storage. And we're going to choose the USB device we just plugged in. Make sure you don't put stuff on the wrong device. I mean, be careful. You don't want to overwrite like your media drive, putting Raspberry Pi OS on it. That'd be crazy. All right. Click that and just go to next. So we're going to go ahead and edit some settings right now because this is important. So we'll go to edit settings and then you want to set the host name to Bjorn because it's going to load Bjorn.local. I have had some issues running Bjorn.local and a lot of times I'll just use the IP address, which makes things a little bit easier if Bjorn.local isn't working. We'll get to that again in a second. I set the username to Bjorn. The password is also Bjorn. You can use any password you want to, but I figure this is an internal testing thing so I can set the username and the password to Bjorn won't matter. Set up your own LAN. So you want to set up your own access point name because it needs to test your own network. So again, make sure you enter in the correct SSID and password for your network. Go ahead and click on services. I always enable SSH. I find it a lot easier to, you know, use it when you're on SSH. So definitely enable that if you want to do it the same way I do. If you go into options, yeah, I don't need anything else. Going to click on save. And then you're going to just click on yes here. Don't click no clear. Don't click that. Click yes. Do you want to continue? Of course. So this is going to sit there. It takes a few minutes and it's going to go through and actually confirm that everything's installed right. So yeah, sit around, wait for it. But we're almost there. After these messages, we'll be right back. And just like that, we are done. You'll notice again, it's going to say, please format. That's because this is a Windows computer and it has no idea what it's looking at when it sees Raspberry Pi operating system. Click cancel, but it says that we're done. So we're going to click continue and we're pretty much good uh, for the SD card. Unplug it and then we're going to plug it into our Raspberry Pi. Yank this out, grab the Raspberry Pi. Now I have two sitting on my desk. I have to make sure this is the right one. This is the Raspberry Pi 2 zero. Plug this in. Where we go. Whoops, wrong side. Do, do, do. And then I'm going to go ahead and plug my screen in. Make sure you know what version it is. This is V4. You see it says little V4 in the corner. Make sure you note that because we're going to need to know that in a second. So we'll go ahead and plug this in. Just be careful. Don't need to bend anything. Give it the old wiggle wiggle. Eh. All right, cool. And now we're just going to go ahead and plug it in. Unlike some of our other installations, we're going to use the further right port that's on here instead of the middle port, I call it. The middle port's the data port, but we're not going to be using it that way. So plug it into the outer port. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter that much, but it's the way I do it. All right, micro USB. They still haven't put USB-C on these things. I don't understand why, but here we go. Plug this in, and this is going to run for kind of a while. It's uh, configuring all the Raspberry Pi stuff, so it may take a few minutes. What you're going to keep an eye out for is on your router to see when this thing finally connects to your network, because then we're going to go into it with uh, Putty, so that'll be pretty fun. In the meantime, while we're doing that, we can actually go ahead and download Putty. You just go to their website. It's just putty, P-U-T-T-Y dot org. Super easy. And just click download. Of course, I've done this before, so I already have it downloaded. So we're just going to open up Putty, and this is what it looks like. So we're going to use the device's I IP address to connect to it. So again, keep an eye on your router, things like that. I actually have an Eero, so it's on my phone. So all I got to do is open up the Eero app. At some point in time, this thing's going to tell me a Raspberry Pi just signed on. So I guess right now, waiting game. All right, cool. It just popped up so I can open that up. And now what's my IP address? It's 201. Cool. I think that was like maybe four minutes. It wasn't that long. It shouldn't take that long. So let's go into Putty. So we're going to go to 192.168.254.201. Port 22 is just standard for SSH because we're going to connect through SSH and click open. Here we go. Just going to go ahead and click on accept here. It's just it always does this. No problem. Login as remember, we set our login name and our password to Bjorn, B-J-O-R-N and then B-J-O-R-N. Hey, we're in. All right. So from here, we're just going to head over to Infinition's GitHub for Bjorn right here. So if we scroll down here, give him a star. Wow, he's gotten a ton of stars recently. Good for you, man. Absolutely. I'm so happy for you that you got this project off. It's awesome. I love it. So if we scroll down here, you can read through, actually read through all the documentation. RTFM, great advice. But we're going to skip straight down to install it. Install. We're going to skip straight down to installation procedures. So, all right. So and it tells you what you want to put on it. This is how I learned how to do it the first time. 32-bit, kernel version 6.6, Debian 12, which is bookworm, the dates, all that good stuff. Here we go. Quick installation. So I think you can copy all of this at the same time. I'm going to do it line by line because the way I did it last time. I'd rather not do it wrong. Whoops. I did not copy and paste correctly. Oh, that's right. Right click for paste. I always forget that on putty. Here we go. Enter. 
One down. Copy. Two down. There we go. This one takes a little while, but you know, again, we got time. We're here all day. Right click. And yeah, here we go. So we're gonna do a full installation. You can do custom. I'm not really sure what it does. I haven't tried that yet, but I know full installation works just fine. So one, enter. And right now it's asking which screen you have. Basically it means wave share version one, two, three, or four. We have a four, talked about it. That's what we looked at in just a second ago. We're gonna press four and enter. From here, I believe, do, 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 do. Random warnings and stuff about RAM capacity or whatever. It should be fine. I'm not too concerned. Press yes. Okay, here we go. And I'm hoping because this is a Raspberry Pi 2, this is a little faster than it was on my other one. But again, we got time. We're here all day, guys. It's all good. So just go ahead, hurry up and wait, and we'll get back to you as soon as it's done. It is actually kind of fun to watch this thing while it's installing because it's doing a lot. It makes it into an Ethernet gadget, just like a Ponigachi and a bunch of other stuff. So I don't know. I kind of like watching stuff when it installs because I like I kind of understanding what it's doing. You don't have to watch it. You can do something else. But we got nothing better to do right now. One eternity later and hey just like that we finished up our installation it probably took the better part of 10 minutes it ain't quick but we're done now it wants to know if we want to reboot so yeah we can reboot press yes hello Whoop. yes system will reboot fantastic now we can actually close putty because we don't need it anymore and if we watch closely this guy should this guy should light up so it's important to note that this is an e-ink display so it's actually currently showing the last time i booted it so it's actually not alive yet but we'll see what it is oh yeah actually it is alive right there you can see in the upper corner right there that's actually moving so that lets you know it's working and the animations are changing so that's super freaking cool we got ourselves a bjorn it's that easy i'm just gonna let it run for a little bit and switch through some of the screens so you can see just how cute this guy is uh oh i've got an open ssh port i actually learned about this last time i ran it, it was like oh crap i know what it is and i'm knowing about it but yeah there is an open port so we can go ahead and close that now but yeah, I absolutely love this interface. He did such a great job. The animations are great. The whole design, he did, again, fantastic job. So let's check out the web UI and see what's going on down there. All right, so for mine, since, again, I know the IP address, we looked it up, 192.168.254.201, and the port's at 8,000. And then here is our web UI. It's very cool. So just like the Ponegachi, we can switch the manual mode on and off. And then we have the playground, which is this main page right here we can see live what it's doing which i actually think is great i'd love to be able to pin that somewhere just because again i love these animations they're so cool Let's see what is this configuration so you can change your configuration files right here we've got the network so right now it's scanning the network so this is all the things that are plugged into my network right now it's got mac addresses and the ip addresses which is pretty cool let's see net kb so again, this is more of your network stuff and it shows where there's open ports. So this is super interesting. Okay, yeah. So my Simpsons TV has an open SSH port, which I know because that's how I connect to it. It's perfectly fine that it's open, I don't care. ESP32 S3. So those are, um, what is that? That might be a ghost ESP that I have plugged in somewhere. You can see the Zima board, that's my server. We have Bjorn.home, that's the Bjorn. The smart plug, so it's a smart outlet somewhere in my house. My TV's in there, all sorts of good stuff. It's great that you can see the entire network map. Then we have credentials. So I don't think I've got any credentials, so I'm not sure if there's anything here. Oh, wait, here we go. So yeah, it sees if it was able to steal or find credentials anywhere, this is where you'd find them. Again, my network's not too exciting, so there's not a lot going on there if you were in a more exciting network you might find some stuff and then go to loot so loot's going to go through um those are the, the files that it found so i don't think this was going to have found anything because again remember this has been running for like 10 seconds my other one has been running for a lot longer it did find some stuff well it found files on the other bjorn i had i've had three of these i built so far and they were finding files that were accessible on other ones which again it's just kind of funny what else uh whoop hide reveal go back i want that and go back home and then so you've got a couple more buttons you have this which will actually it changes the ui size so if we open up let's see let's open this up again if you go plus it makes it you know bigger smaller whatever it does that and then what else do we have bigger smaller there's the bjorn and then okay cool so you can go through and run and stop different orchestrators you can disconnect the wi-fi restart the service uh, create live status actions that i don't know what that does again this is alpha and um, that's actually really interesting it's a great project i absolutely love this thing again when i first saw this project on reddit like i think it was months ago i was super psyched and i was just really hoping this would become something and wow it certainly has i got used to things like ponigachi that were pretty good but very utilitarian and not very um what's the word for it 
I mean, just the animations and the web UI with the great graphics and all of that stuff is just so well put together. And I just, I love this project. Also keep in mind, this is brand new and on alpha. So there are problems and bugs and stuff that are getting fixed every single day. I've already talked to Infinition and there's be several bugs that have been fixed since it dropped as alpha. Also, that means that there's plenty of time and plenty of room for new features. So again, this is something I'm gonna be keeping tabs on for a long time. Thank you so much for watching. If you made your own Bjorn Cyber Viking, leave a comment down below and let me know how it went for you. You guys are absolute legends. Thank you so much for watching this video over every other video on the internet. You guys are awesome and we'll catch you next time.